Joining us now is Tom Siebel, C3 AI Chairman, CEO, and Co-Founder. Tom, a uh, lot to go through, but let's start on the results. It looks like uh, you know, non-GAAP gross margins came in a little light uh, of expectations. Uh, the street was looking for something in the 70s, came in at 69, but about in line with the results and the guide so far. Can you give us some color on the quarter? A solid quarter, but we exceeded revenue, exceeded cash, exceeded earnings. Uh, as it relates to gross margins, gross margins came down a little bit associated with all the trials that we're doing um, that are aligned with the consumption-based pricing model that we put into effect. And I think the uptake that we're having with the generative AI applications, which is just huge. And uh, basically, the C3 generative AI, the value proposition is we take the customer live, whether it's missile defense agency, an intelligence agency, Coke Industries, whoever it might be, we bring them live on generative AI in 12 weeks for a quarter million dollars. And after that, they pay by a consumption model. Well, in the, the initial applications, the, the margin on those trials is not high. I mean, we're going to invest whatever it takes to mm -hmm. make sure that all those customers are su successful. And what about remaining performance obligations? Uh, you know. The, it looks like it came in at 334 um, and a half million, uh, right around there. The street was looking for 380. How's the pipeline looking? And what sorts of industries are knocking on your door and, and wanting conversations? Pipeline is growing substantially. Uh, RPO going down is a absolute direct effect of change to consumption-based pricing. So rather than doing enterprise deals of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars, we're doing these pilots for a quarter million dollars or a half a million dollars. And so RPO, and then it's just consumption-based pricing from there. So, in the, so RPO goes down, revenue goes up. Uh, that's the way that model works. As it relates to industries, we're seeing massive uptake in defense. Uh, that, that, is, that is our rapidly, most rapidly growing industry, defense and intelligence, with uh, uh, the uh, uh, CDAO, the Department of, Department of Defense, United States Air Force, Army, everything involved, contested logistics, predictive maintenance, what have you. So defense is a huge business. Uh, manufacturing, supply chain, demand chain, financial services, businesses, you know, in general, the industrial commercial in AI, interest in enterprise AI has never been higher than it is today. And so the world is kind of coming our way. So then what's the impact you expect from these, um, these domain-specific offerings, these 20 domain-specific offerings that you're uh, announcing today and how soon? Is it, well, it, it, it's immediate, okay? So I would say of our, if we look at our pipeline of opportunities that go out the next 12 months, uh, the, 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 the pipeline for the product that is the longest is substantially generative AI. And people, you know, when we get to industrial applications, they're not, in, they're not deploying generative AI for these kind of cute chappy, chappy T, let's chat stuff. And we, were, we want to run factories. We want to run supply chains. We want to do predictive maintenance. We want production optimization. We want more productive human capital. So that takes domain-specific applications of these large language models uh, for for SAP, for Oracle, for Salesforce, for supply chain, for demand chain, for sales, for marketing, for customer service, for utilities, defense, intelligence. And so we have 28 applications that are available today. They can be ordered today on the Azure marketplace, the Google marketplace, and the AWS marketplace. And uh, this is a huge land grab in generative AI. And John, we are going to market. Yeah, uh, very exciting, Tom. I am curious about the Baker Hughes relationship, by far the largest contributor to revenue, at least up until this point. Uh, how is that progressing? It's great. In other words, we're, we're, uh, the Baker Hughes relationship is great. We're jointly selling with them all over the world. Uh, they are, you know, certainly our most important partner. And um, we are on speed dial with them. And um, I don't know how it could be going better. And they're, they're also a large consumer of our technology for internal use. So we're, we're killing it. I don't know how many, I think we've closed over $650 million in business in oil and gas together. So I don't know how that could be going better.